let's talk about chroma keying inside DaVinci Resolve. Now a chroma key is when you take a specific color and remove it from the background of a video or an image. So in this case, we're gonna take the green background in this video here and replace it with the background that we have here in this Photoshop file. So the first thing we're gonna do is drag our background onto the first track on our timeline. I'm gonna drag our green screen clip onto the second track above our background image. Let's stretch this out so it lasts the entire duration of the green screen clip. So this is all we need to do now in the edit tab. Just make sure that your green screen is on top of the background. So from here, we're gonna move on to the coloring section. This is where we'll do all the green screen removal. So the first thing you need to do is add a new node. And you can do that with the shortcut option S or you can come up here and do node add serial node. Um, the reason we do this is because this first node will be reserved for any kind of color correction or brightness control or maybe you want the green screen to be a little more vibrant so you add some saturation to it and you want to do all those corrections in a node before you actually do the green screen removal. So we're not going to do any of those color corrections in this tutorial. So for now we're going to click on the second node. This is where we'll do all of our keying. Uh, the first thing we'll do is come down here to the qualifier. And this is our tool that we're going to use to remove the green. It's basically an advanced color picker. So you can see the tool looks like a color picker. And you're going to pick the shade of green that you want to qualify or remove. So I like to pick it as close to the subject as I can and that way you know the edges are the hardest part to key when you're pulling a key and so if you qualify a color close to the edge then you're gonna have better success removing the green around the edge you can see it didn't really do anything when I clicked it but it did affect something over here on my node in order to see that represented here in this screen you're gonna come down here and click on this highlight visualizer if you click that, it's going to give us this alpha composite. And what this is telling you is any black area is going to be transparent and any white area will remain unchanged. So in our case, we want it flipped. We want the black to be on the background and the white to be on the subject. So we're going to hit this button here to invert it. And now we're going to finesse this until this background is completely black and our subject is completely white. So we'll come down here to our qualifier settings. This first row is to select the, the hue that you want to remove. You can widen the range, and that's going to take away more greens. But you can see here that it's starting to reach into the blues a little bit. And we probably don't want that. I'm wearing a blue shirt, so I don't want to start seeing it. I don't want to, I don't want it to start affecting the shirt that I'm wearing. And right now it's not, so we're probably okay, but just for good measure, I'm gonna slide this over so it's only capturing uh, green hues. Now you can see if you widen it too much, it will start to affect other areas of your image. So now you can see that my face is, this is creepy looking, but my face has turned uh, half black, and that means my face is transparent right here. Uh, and that's because you've started to get into the skin tones here. So just be careful when you're widening your range of, va of hue values that you stay within the green that you're keying out and that you don't affect anything else. And it's easy to kind of reach over into the blues or into the skin tones and just be careful about that. The second row is going to be your saturation level. So our green screen is pretty even. So there's not really much of a variance in saturation. It's all saturated pretty evenly. So we're not going to worry about this too much. Um, what we really should worry about is the luminance value. And this is just the values from dark to light. So you can see we've got some, uh, some stuff going on down here. If we turn our highlights off, you can see that we've got some outlets down here on the wall behind me. And so those are a little bit, there's shadows going on there. Those are a little darker than the rest of the wall. So if we pull the low value down into the shadows some more, and you can see it starts to get rid uh, of those outlets. Now this is a piece. This is a piece of 
some paint came off the wall here. So this is totally white. So this isn't even being included in our key. So I'll show you how to get rid of that in a minute. Um, but for now, this is looking pretty good. This is all black, so that's transparent. And this is all still white here on our subject. So that's looking like a pretty good key. If we zoom in here, you can see that the edges are a little rough. And what we can do for that is to take this blur radius and just start to turn that up until it smooths the edges out a little bit. Now if you deselect the highlight tool, you can see that it doesn't look like anything's happened. And that's because we've established what should be transparent and what should be kept, but we haven't actually told DaVinci to apply that yet. And to do that, we have to create what's called an alpha output. So you right click here in this negative space and, and select add alpha output. And then you're going to grab this little gray triangle here, and that's, the, that's your effects output. If we grab this triangle and we hold down your mouse clicker and draw a path to this alpha output, so the effects that were in this node here are going to be sent down to this output to basically tell DaVinci to apply the effect. So now if we turn off our highlight visualizer, you can see that the background is now behind me. So if we zoom in here, you can see that there's still some green around the edge. Now to get rid of this, we're going to come down here to the in and out ratio and we're going to pull that back. If we push it forward, you can see that it's, it's adding some green there. Um, but we're just going to go ahead and pull it the opposite direction. And it just kind of pulls, pulls in on those pixels um, that are green and just kind of chokes them out so that they don't appear anymore. And you can see that it did a pretty good job there. That looks pretty good. Um, you can also see that it actually choked out that little spot where we had the, the white coming through the key, our key. Um, let's see, let's pull this back. You can see that it just kind of got rid of that, which is great. <clears throat> and I'll show you another way that if, if it didn't get rid of it at that point, I'll show you another way you could have gotten rid of that too. Now this little glass panel here in the background is where you can like put slides or something. So if I were instructing like on a Udemy course here and I wanted to show slides over my shoulder, I obviously wouldn't want to be here in the frame. So what I can do is come down here to this uh, reframe option and I can pan and that will slide me to, you know, in whatever direction I'm panning. And then I can zoom to make me a little smaller if I think I'm a little big. And then I can tilt to move up and down. So I'm just going to put me right there on the edge of the frame. Now what you can see happening is that this is the edge of my video uh, when I was filmed against the green screen. Um, and so my transparency in the key only goes to the edge of the video. So how do we fix this? Well, we can go over here to our power windows and we're going to select a garbage mask. And what that's going to do is if we select one of these power windows, it's going to give us a rectangle, some sort of shape. I've selected the rectangle. And basically whatever's inside this rectangle is going to be kept and whatever is outside the rectangle is just going to go transparent. As if you lift your hand up or something and it goes outside the edge of this, it's going to look like it's chopping your hand off. And obviously you don't want that in your shot. So once we put this here, everything outside of this box, um, on you know, with my green screen video here, everything outside where that box is, is now going to be transparent. So it won't even show the edge of my video anymore because that's outside this box. Also, if we still had that little white white space down here from the wall where the paint came off, if our choker hadn't gotten rid of that, we could use this and just slide this over a little bit and it would have erased that as well. But again, if you're moving more than I am here, you just want to be careful that you're not going to be cutting your hand off when you move this. Um, but if we click out of this, you can now see that here I am keyed against the background. Uh, the edges look good and uh, that covers it for keying inside DaVinci Resolve. Thank <laughs> you.